but what can you do if you've been diagnosed, right? How do you navigate that journey? And is there hope? And in my humble opinion, there is, because most people actually survive. Interestingly enough, I tried not to film that. And I did because I didn't think people would understand. Um, and I will tell you, honestly, the Holy Spirit talked to me. And I had, what happened was I actually had an abnormal mammogram and then an abnormal MRI. They saw something underneath my right nipple on the MRI. And so I had to get more studies. And then I had um, already diagnosed a BRCA mutation of undetermined significance, meaning that um, BRCA genes are actually the tumor suppressor genes. And so when you have a mutation, that increases your risk of having breast cancer. And so my concern was, is this happening to me? And so when I talked to my doctors, we talked about the different options. And one was a prophylactic mastectomy. And so that was a preventive measure that I took. And I felt like that journey, although we had heard about like Angelina Jolie, who had done the same thing for black women is kind of taboo. And actually when it comes to um, even treatments, I mean, unfortunately, believe it or not, even though a lot of black women are diagnosed with breast cancer, some of them do forego treatment. And so helping people to combat and face that fear, which is honestly, before I had that surgery, fear pervaded my life. I lived under a cloud of fear. And I always thought my mom died at 53. For some reason, that was a number in my head. I only was going to live to that same age. And so after I had that mastectomy, I'll tell you, it's almost like my world exploded. And I feel like now I'm going to live maybe forever, but at least uh, I'll be an octogenarian. I'm going to live over, over 100 years. So yeah. It was a very personal journey, of course, but I also didn't want to, <sighs> I was nervous that people wouldn't understand, like why? When it comes to your breast, especially for women, you know, like women are like, why would you cut your breast off on purpose? And I, I, I'm telling you, it was with, even without understanding the science and data, because I'm a doctor, so I understand the science, the voice was so clear in my head. It was, and I, like I said over and over again, it was the Holy Spirit. And so sometimes as a person going through having a faith journey, and then in my opinion, that was what was happening for me. It was just almost like, do this and you'll be okay. And I just could not articulate that to everybody because everyone doesn't understand that. Everyone doesn't understand the voice of the Holy Spirit. And but for, for me, that's how I was raised. My mom, you know, raised us apostolic. So it was just a fact. And so I knew it had never, I had never in my life heard a voice so clear. And so it was almost like I needed to do this, but I did not feel like everybody would understand. So I did, I tried not to, but it was hit right at the same time as my birthday. And I, I said, I wanna do this by my birthday. And so that's kind of the timing of when I decided to do it because it was time for another mammogram. I was like, that's gonna be my last mammogram. This is it. And this last time I'm having an abnormal mammogram than an abnormal MRI this is the last one. So let's fix it. So a lot of people don't check their DMs, right? And in, in reality television in particular, people are pretty aggressive. You know, they sometimes will DM you stuff like, I don't like your edges or why don't you change your hair, you know, whatever. And so you sometimes are like apprehensive about checking the messages or reading the comments. The by far, I would say at least once a week, someone will inbox me with, okay, I'm going through this journey. I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. You had a nipple sparing. How is that different? All right, this is my diagnosis. What do you think about this? And so for me, it actually was, again, the voice of God literally almost mandating that I do this because it is now I'm a resource for people. And I, 100% answer all of them. I answer every single question that whenever someone reaches out to me about that. And then interestingly enough, I reconnected with a family member. So my cousin, her daughter, her daughter is 20 something. She actually recently was diagnosed with breast cancer. And so I had, I moved away from, you know, for college at 18 and I had not been home ever since. So I, you know, not, it was like a distant cousin. And so if it was not for that, in that experience, I think she would have actually, you know, she was like you, it was like, we were just talking the whole time and she's doing, the daughter's doing great. And, um, but yeah, but it's been a great opportunity for me to connect with people that I don't know, but I felt like they're sisters in faith. I think if we all can understand that, you know, even though breast cancer is a very common diagnosis among women, especially among black women, 
your personal decision of how you navigate that is your own personal journey. And so I think a lot of times people think there's one universal way to address it and to treat it. I find it amazing that Ananda Lewis is on this panel because she's going to talk about her experience and her decision. And it is your own individual experience. And I will say that the Holy Spirit will probably, when you're going through journeys like this, one faith is important imperative to be able to navigate it. And number two, that you have to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is gonna be talking to you and guiding you through the process. And I know I'm a scientist, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I believe in data, but I believe in faith. And I can't say one is superior to the other. And so I think if people could understand that and get that and just support their sisters through that journey, whatever their decision is and whatever that looks like, understand it's the right one for them. And you don't have to understand why they're doing it and what their decision is and why they made that decision, but it is the right one for them based on their own individual mission and you know messages that they're getting from job, you know, from God. That's for me. That's what I think. I'm still a Bravo girl forever and always, and um, there's still we have a relationship, so you may see me a little bit. But I have decided that at this present moment, I think they're doing great, and I think my. God is sending me in another direction at this present moment. That does not mean I'll never go back on Married to Medicine. It just means that this current year, there was another mission and vision for me. And I think I'm sitting in the right seat right now. This is a part of my journey. So yeah, when I tell you it is nothing but love and support, and I mean, I was in the military, right? I'm not still in the military, but I'm a veteran for life. And that's kind of how I feel. Like we talk on the phone, we hang out, but it does not have to be on camera. And it does not have to be, especially, I would say over the last couple of years, it was a very difficult experience for me being on reality television. And I am in such a great place um, that I just didn't want to disrupt that at this moment. And so it feels very organic for me not to like live my life on screen right now. And, um, but it's, Everybody is different. And so the ones who are doing that, I think it's the best thing for them at this, they gotta make their own decision. But for me, it just wasn't the right decision to be on camera. One thing that reality television makes you do is it makes you address things that you sometimes wouldn't address. Like for instance, interestingly enough, with um, even this situation with my mom, you know, we never talked about like her family history. We never talked about, even though I was there, for her journey. When we came home, it wasn't like, okay, do you understand that I just went to a radiation treatment? Okay, you understand that I'm having chemotherapy and this is what's going on. It was almost like things happen and you don't really talk about it. You just like act like it didn't happen. And in my marriage, I learned some of those same traits, right? And so there was a lot that we just, if it weren't for our camera there and even the producer saying, okay, so what about this that we just saw? What about this? I would have probably would have continued in that same vein. And so it's difficult sometimes to have hard conversations. And I was, it was no different in my marriage. And if it weren't for reality television, we wouldn't have ever done that. <laughs>